Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. Today's lesson is part two of a two-part series. In this lesson I'm going to show you how to write a macro so that you can update a worksheet tab name depend, uh, based upon the contents of a cell. In part one I showed you how to create a custom function in Excel that would capture a worksheet name into a cell. So we created a custom function so we were able to pick up the worksheet name for example January 2010 and have that placed in a cell. So here was our custom function that we wrote and here was a variation the second custom function that we wrote. In today's lesson we're going to be doing the opposite. What we want to do is is type an entry into cell E1 and notice that I've shaded E1 in all the worksheets over here so whatever we put into cell E1 we want to write a macro that will then change the name of the worksheet tab now the challenge that we're going to have here is that we're going to be typing an entry into a cell E1 but we cannot use any of these characters. These characters are disallowed in naming a worksheet tab. So for example if I tried to change the name of a worksheet and include a question mark. So for example if I tried to type in Danny question mark Excel will not allow that question mark. So you see that it's outlawed right there when I try to type it but what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using a value from the cell where a question mark would certainly be allowed. I could type in Danny question mark without any problem but I'm going to run into an error when I write my macro. Alright let's switch over here to the January worksheet and what I want to do is I want to open up a different view of this worksheet that will actually show the code that we're going to use. So down here we're going to be using this module and remember that we must include our coding for a custom function or for a macro inside a module. So I've already copied in the code and let's just work through it and then I'm going to rename this. I'm going to write this from scratch. So remember those disallowed characters, the asterisk, the apostrophe, the forward and backslashes, left and right bracket, and question mark. We cannot allow any of those characters. So the first line of code over here is on error resume next. So we don't want our macro to come to a screeching halt. Now here is how we write our code for each WS. Well WS is a shorthand for worksheet. So this we creating a little variable in here. So we could name it whatever we want. So for each WS, for each worksheet in this collection of worksheets in this workbook. What we want to do is for this variable we want to change the name of the worksheet. Now many of you are familiar with the left function in Excel and it has a, really the same uh, syntax inside VBA code. So we're using a built-in function in Visual Basic, the left function, and we're going to refer to the uh, worksheet cells collection. Now notice this 1-5 over here. Remember I pointed out that in cell E1, so column E row 1, in Visual Basic, instead of using column row, we use row column. So in row 1, column 5. In other words, in cell E1, we want to add in the value. Now the reason I have 31 over here is that worksheet names are limited to 31 characters. So we want to write in to the worksheet the leftmost characters, the left 31 most characters that are in a specific cell. Specifically the cell that is in row 1, column 5. In other words, cell E5. And then we'll go on to the next and then here in case we have an error we'll just cl quietly close this macro. Alright so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this from scratch so I'm going to come through and delete. We begin a macro by typing in the word sub and I always like to type it in in lowercase uh, and then I want to give the name to this procedure. Procedure must begin with a letter and contain no spaces. So let's just call this name 
WS. So name worksheet. Now notice that when I hit enter that I have a left and a right parentheses next to that name. I didn't type it in, I just typed in SUB in lowercase automatically that got initially capitalized so I've typed it in correctly. Here's the name of this macro, the name of this procedure that we're creating and I have an end sub. So inside here we create our code. Now I like to use indenting, that's a good best practice. So I'm going to type in lowercase on error. So in other words in case of an error what do I want to do? I want to resume to the next instruction. Okay, now notice that when I hit enter that initially all of those keywords got capitalized. So what do I want to do for each and in this case, I'm going to use a variable. WS will stand in my mind for worksheet. In, and I'm going to type in this workbook, period, worksheets. Now notice that I have what's called an autocomplete. So I can just click tab when I have worksheets. So for this workbook, for each individual worksheet in the collection of worksheets, what I want to do when I hit enter is I want to take that worksheet name, so the variable WS name, and I want to use a function. Remember all functions begin with the equal sign. So I want to say equal to the left function, left parentheses. I want to take the worksheet cells and remember that in Visual Basic, rather than using column row, we use row column. So in the first row, in the fifth column, in other words, column E, first row, cell E1, what do I want to do? I want to get the value that's in that cell. And what do I want to do? I want to limit it to 31 characters. All right, we're almost complete. Now, what I want to do, come over here, is that I want to say for the next instruction, in case there is an error, I want to say in case of an error, so on error, go to, and that go to is written as a keyword without any spaces in there, go to zero. Now I can clean this up a little bit by using a little bit of indentation. So the for and the next you can see they easily match up, the on and the on match up. And really that's all I need to do. So I have now completed my macro. Before I can test it out of course I have to come back here and put in a value. So let's put in here uh, January budget. and let's bring back the uh, macro. One way that I can do that is to right mouse click and say view the code. So here is the code in this module. So what I can do is I can test it out from inside this module. I can either press the F5 key or come up and use this button up here. So it looks just like the play button on your DVD. Click OK and there you go. So the name that I have in cell E1 now becomes the name of the worksheet. And of course I could come over to any other worksheet. Now this could get very very boring if every time we wanted to run this we had to open up the code window. And another way to open up the code window is to press Alt F11 and then come in here and click it. So I'm going to show you an easier way to uh, apply this code. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to add a command to the Quick Access Toolbar. I'm using Excel 2010, Excel 2007 would operate in a similar manner. Come down here to the More Commands and what I want to do is in the filter I want to access the macro. So here's the macro that I have over here, name WS, name W worksheet. So I want to add that over here into the quick access toolbar. But I need to add an icon in here. Now in Excel 2007, 2010 the number of icons that we have is really very very limited. So I'm just going to choose one of these color blocks and the way that I'll make this uh, be meaningful is it will be change all right
right and click OK so I've now added this command on to the quick access toolbar now of course remember before I can run this macro I want to put some text in here so I'm just going to put in here preliminary All right, remember to hit enter of course so now what I want to do when I click the button is I want to have this value in this cell E1 become the name of the worksheet so I'll come up here and here's my command that I added to the quick access toolbar to change the worksheet name click OK and there you go let's try it out on one more remember of course in this case to add some text in here so I'll just put in here March 2010 results Control enter and now watch how this will change the name of the worksheet click OK and there you go so there you've learned how by using code by creating a macro inside Visual Basic we begin by typing the word sub if we were creating a function we would begin by typing the word function and I always type these keywords in lowercase so that I make sure that when I finish that I haven't made a spelling error I've been known to do that and I'll just call this Danny this is just a dummy right here and when I hit enter notice that the left and the right parentheses are automatically added the word function has been initially capitalized and I have the end function if I wanted to create a sub procedure or a macro I type the keyword sub use it in lowercase and when I hit enter at the end of that line you see that it ends sub so end function and sub depending upon what we typed in there we added a line of code so that we could prevent any potential errors remember those disallowed um, uh, characters in a worksheet name asterisk apostrophe question mark forward and backslash etc so this is our protection against the error and then we wrote a four so for each worksheet in this workbook collection of worksheets what we want to do is we want to use the left function we want to take whatever value we have in a specific cell e1 which we write in VBA as row column we want to get the value in other words what it contains but limit the left uh, the characters to 31. 31 is the maximum number of characters allowed inside a worksheet name. So there you have learned some really, I think, some terrific techniques for however you wish to do it, whether you wish to go from the worksheet name as we just did here uh, I'm, I'm sorry from the worksheet cell and have that become the name of the worksheet tab or in the first lesson to take the name of the worksheet tab and put that entry into a cell so this coding came as a courtesy of Bill Jellin from his book Excel Gurus Gone Wild the first lesson came from John Walkenbach's book Excel 2007 formulas great resources as well as another resource that I recommend my five DVD ROM series the 50 best tips for Excel access word PowerPoint and Outlook and I'll look for you in the next lesson